Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your work week. For most of us, this is the first day of the work week. Not everybody. Some people had to work yesterday, but regardless, I hope you guys are doing well out there this morning and having a great start to your week. I got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise for today and we'll also we'll give you an update on the tropics expecting some severe weather in the upper portion of the country we'll talk on that we'll talk on everybody and then like i said we'll give you the latest and greatest model information from overnight into this morning on uh what could potentially happen with um future lee i'm calling it future lee because confidence is incredibly high uh, that uh, this will be Tropical Storm Lee and then Hurricane Lee eventually as we enter our weekend as uh, the confidence is just pretty much sky high that this could be not only a hurricane uh, but uh, the chance to be a major hurricane which is a category three or higher. It's just trying to figure out the steering currents. Is it going to affect land? Is it just going to be one giant hurricane out there in the ocean and not really affecting anybody but the fishes? That's what we got to figure out and we will continue to try to figure that out for you folks and give you uh, the latest and greatest information each and every day until we um, are done with future lease. So with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. So let's get rolling. The latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, really, we got this wave coming off Africa right now. has a 70% chance to become a depression or a named storm. Uh, this would likely be Margo. This will likely take the name Lee. This is Invest 95L, and we're not waking up to a depression this morning, but sometime in the next few updates, uh, this could be a tropical depression. And Heck, maybe by the time we get to the end of the day, this would be tropical storm. Lee, as it's a, a pretty healthy looking tropical wave, probably one of the best looking tropical waves we've seen so far this hurricane season, but we're expecting this to become a tropical storm sometime in the next 24 hours. So uh, we're not going to talk about this. This is actually the remnants of Franklin that uh, is actually going to get jolted southeastward. Um, has a chance to develop, but a very low chance at a 20% chance to develop back into a depression or a storm. So let's take a look at what's going on with Invest 95L, which will be Lee here in the next day uh, or, or less or maybe 36 hours. Lee is a potent looking tropical wave. I mean, and it's it's starting to get into that middle ground, the tropical Atlantic, what we call the central tropical Atlantic or central MDR, which stands, stands for main development region. Lesser Antilles here, Leeward Islands, uh, Puerto Rico, and then you see the tail end of the Dominican Republic, and then this is the western Atlantic into here. Right now, it is a healthy looking tropical wave popping off some robust convection, shower and storms uh, this morning, and it has been. It has some excellent outflow. You see how these clouds right up here are going in the opposite direction. We talked about that last night. We're not going to do it in this video. We'll do it again in the next video when we really just solely talk on the tropics. But we talked about that anticyclonic flow, right? ULAC, upper level um, anticyclone. So basically this has a nice outflow moving in the opposite direction of the actual center of circulation spin so uh, you see clouds going in the opposite direction like this outside of the storm that is actually good news for the most part for the storm now if you see this tucked really closely to the low level circulation which is somewhere into here most likely then that means that there's some shear really close by to the storm and this probably wouldn't look as healthy as what it does but so far excellent outflow it's breathing, it's ventilating, and uh, it's really beginning to come into its own right now. We most likely will have Lee uh, sometime inside the next 24 hours. So let's compare some model guidance. We'll take a look at the Euro um, first, and uh, we'll get this moving here. We'll start off this morning, and uh, we'll go in 24-hour intervals. So we'll go from this, this morning, tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, etc. And we move into Wednesday morning. Okay, and uh, we're still looking probably at a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. All right, we'll take it into Thursday morning, September the 7th. And at this point, I think it's all but certain that we're going to have tropical storm leave, maybe even a hurricane. 
Okay, we go to Friday morning, which is September the 8th. This will most likely be a hurricane at this point. Euro is saying this is going to be a 978 millibar hurricane. I would argue that's pushing Category 2 status. All right, uh, Leeward Islands, uh, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti right in here, and then the southwest areas of the Bahamas, Bermuda right here. Then we take it to a Friday morning. It strengthens even more. 954 millibar hurricane. That's pushing major status, I would think. High end category two hurricane sitting just northeast of the Lesser Antilles. So um, it's looking like it's going to miss the Caribbean islands. That's good news. So let's go on and switch it to the Euro, but in the Southwest Atlantic here in the Western Atlantic. All right, we know where we are Cuba. We got Jamaica, Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, <clears throat> Virginia right here, and just the Southeast in general, in the South Central US. We'll start off uh, Saturday morning we take it to Sunday morning this thing begins to slow down and it strengthens even more at this point it is probably a full-fledged major hurricane uh, most likely uh, pushing category 4 status at this point all right and it doesn't move a whole lot okay then we get into Monday morning all right at some point Sunday afternoon <clears throat> excuse me it could strengthen to a sub 930 millibar hurricane this is just one run of the model uh, yesterday's Euro had it strengthened into a sub 920 millibar hurricane. I think as low as a 913, which would be a category five hurricane, no doubt. This is no doubt at least a category four hurricane this coming Sunday afternoon, September the 10th. We get into the morning of September 11th, still a powerful hurricane. But if you notice in a 40, a 48 hour time frame from Saturday morning to Monday morning, this doesn't move a whole lot. Okay. It's, it's just kind of, inching along two to five miles per hour not not much okay and at this point it's uh, just north of Puerto Rico and areas of the Lesser Antilles powerful hurricane but not bothering anybody okay then it begins to feel that weakness that we've been talking about and uh, it could buffer in strength could strengthen somewhat I think someone asked a question um, why is it hard and I haven't had a chance to answer the comments from last night's video but why is a her category 5 hurricane hard to maintain well it's just because you need near perfect conditions uh, to get a category 5 hurricane in the first place and uh, you know it's pretty hard to sustain perfect uh, condition conditions I mean let's be real perfection is uh, impossible in some cases and it's um, you never know what the definition of perfect is and I say perfect conditions for a category 5 but really there can already always be a little bit better conditions right we truly don't know the definition of perfect conditions out here in regards to the tropics. But what we can tell you is there's going to be excellent, excellent conditions out here for this to be a very, one of the most likely could potentially be the most strongest hurricane of the 2023 hurricane season. It's just, is it going to bother anybody? And it might not. So we're a week out at this point next Tuesday morning, uh, basically this time, but a week from now. Okay, you got Bermuda here. So this time, a week from now, we're still talking about this. In fact, it's just coming into the picture. So powerful hurricane, but look as it begins to jolt northward. Abrupt turn north. We're getting to Wednesday morning. We have a threatening scenario for little old Bermuda right here. Wednesday morning, powerful, powerful hurricane. This is eight days from now. Okay, and then we move it into Thursday morning, September the 14th. And then this scrapes and is sitting right beside Bermuda, just to the west of Bermuda, sometime next Thursday afternoon. That just goes to tell you how long we're going to be talking about this. And I'm trying not to talk it to death, guys, but uh, I think it's important to um, consistently keep you guys updated on this system. I kind of gave you an example of having high confidence as this is going to go out to sea and then suddenly things switching on you in regards to Hurricane Florence in 2018. Uh, five years ago and uh, kind of showed you how things can change very quickly uh, as Florence uh, had a solid chance that it was heading out to sea next thing you know or uh, you folks in North Carolina South Carolina know what happened with Florence ended up making landfall as a hurricane so um, we take a look at the latest GFS just ran and same kind of situation take it to Wednesday morning this uh, this the GFS has this as tropical storm Lee here in the next 24 hours no doubt and then by the time we're getting into Thursday morning still a tropical storm I would say Friday morning it quickly strengthens Thursday morning to Friday morning on the GFS 993 
and then Friday morning, 964 millibar, probably Category 2 hurricane. So it goes from a tropical storm to a Category 2 hurricane in about 24 hours from Thursday morning to Friday morning off the GFS. All right, we keep this rolling. Same route as the Euros taken. It's going to miss the Lesser Antilles, thank goodness, because this would cause catastrophic conditions. And then Saturday morning, we stop it here, September the 9th. This Saturday morning, we got a 940 millibar hurricane, category three, low end category four, probably in this case. It's always hard to gauge the millibar as far as the categories, but I try to do the best I can and I'm um, just kind of guessing. But this, this could potentially be a category four hurricane at this point. Okay, we're going to switch it to the Western Atlantic and we keep this rolling. This is Saturday morning and then we get into Sunday morning. Doesn't strengthen a whole lot, but I mean, we've got a full fledged category four hurricane uh, this coming Sunday morning, September the 10th, but it's missing land. That's the good news, right? Um, obviously, but then we get into Monday morning, the morning of September 11th. Um, this is well north of the Caribbean islands, basically kind of entering the Bermuda Triangle, if you will. So, not bothering anybody. Um, it's just a very powerful hurricane at this point. And then we take it into Tuesday morning. Um, still major hurricane and it's basically taking the same route as the euro is both models have incredible agreement uh in the long range and i would consider a week from today to still the long range and then we take it into wednesday morning and uh, it's a little bit further i would say just a little bit further west than the euro not a whole lot but uh has a very powerful hurricane uh definitely making its way just west of bermuda no crazy impacts if this was exactly what was to happen and then what's interesting is, is we look at the rest of the run here. We got a trough approaching. Okay, we got a ridge building to its northeast. We'll talk about that here in a second. And this actually just does not hook out the sea as fast as we want it based off the GFS. Now, this is, you know, eight, nine, ten days out. And this, unfortunately, plows right into Nova Scotia as a hurricane. Um, about ten days from now. Pretty far. We're going to be talking about this for a while. I keep saying that, but it's true. We are. All right, but we really need to figure out what's going to happen with this trough. The European Ensemble, okay, this takes us out to 240 hours out. Uh, so this takes us all the way to basically the evening of September the 14th. And as you can tell, it's rumbling here, gets into this Western Atlantic, and then most model guidance has this, one, becoming a powerful hurricane, and then two, making a pretty abrupt turn north, but unfortunately Bermuda right in the crosshairs of us most of these members okay european ensemble makes up 51 members but you got a couple stragglers wanting to go this way now um we don't know if this eventually starts to just turn more due north does a ridge develop on top of on top of the storm forcing it back north northwest it's a big question you look at the gfs ensemble and this only goes out 100 210 hours I would say the GFS is just a little bit quicker in general. So this takes it to the afternoon of 13th. And like I said, you know, just most members go out to sea. So right now you would you would say there is high confidence this is going to be a fish storm. Unless you're in Bermuda, you're obviously not in under the ocean. You are on land, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? So right now, confidence is above average that this will go out to sea. But things could change, guys. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about why here. All right, so uh, the blues you see on your screen is lower heights. The warmer colors, like the orange, the reds, whatever color you want to call that, that is higher heights. Higher heights symbolizes like ridging. Uh, lower heights in the blue, troughing like a cold front, area of low pressure, upper low, upper trough. And that's why our hurricane down here, as we're starting this off Saturday morning, September the 9th, is in a big area of blue down here. Okay, you notice this. Um, red colors right on top of the storm. This is our ridging on top of the storm. This is why this storm is initially just moving more so kind of uh, southeast to northwest. Okay. Or I would say east southeast to um, make sure I don't get my west northwest. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's why this storm is just in general moving more so um, east to west rather than, you know, south to north. Okay, it definitely favors that more. So you continue to see this, right? And then one thing I want you to watch here is look how this huge white area opens up, right? And then it, you see blue come up, right? So that is an upper trough beginning to strengthen over the central and eastern U.S. Okay, that's 
basically kills any ridging in place. That opens up a wide open lane for this to go and start to turn northward. And it does. It feels that weakness. But one thing I want you to notice here, and this only goes out 10 days, is look how uh, the orange and red colors right in here begin to build back in place just to the north and northeast of this storm. Okay, I want, I want, to, I want to remind you guys, and we'll stop it here. Okay, well, actually we'll go to about right here. Ridging actually building in on just the entire west, the eastern side of the storm. Okay, so I want to remind you guys that around ridging, the flow goes like this. Okay, so it kind of goes like that, and that's the flow around this. Okay, you got a flow trying to kind of yank this, um, tr trying to push this out because of this trough. So you're going to have some kind of competing flows if this is what it looks like 10 days from now. But just, just to reiterate, this is 10 days from now. So I have a feeling that this would begin to slow down. Um, but what would this kind of ridge right here do? You know, uh, do, does it get pushed out the way because of this trough? And does this kind of like maybe just continue to try to hook but not hook as fast and do like that? Or does it kind of go into main? Uh, or does it just head on out to sea because this ridge moves back, moves away? But the last frame of the euro, this is strengthening. So that's why, you know, it's hard to sit here and say that this is just going out to sea. Okay. Um, we, we don't know that with high, with, with high confidence. We're, 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 our confidence is above average that this could not affect the eastern U.S., but it's not completely there. And you look at the GFS, shows that ridging build just like the euro does. But you got a big old trough setting up, okay? So this would act as basically thumping this hurricane back out into the ocean. But at the same time, like I said, you know, even on the, even on the GFS, you got this competing flow um, that's trying to push this back into land. And at the same time, you have a flow that's kind of pushing this back away. So you would say, all right, well, wh where would this go after this? Well, on the on the uh, GFS, it kind of works against this ridging because I guess ultimately the upper trough wins out and it still continues to try to move north and then northeast, but it just does not turn quick enough. And ultimately you hit a landmass, which is Nova Scotia on this one particular run. So this is something that's been coming up on the models is this ridging right on top of the storm. This would act as a competing flow that's going to try to make it a lot harder just to abruptly turn out to sea. Okay, that's something we got to watch for sure. So that's it on the tropics. We'll give you an update again in the next video. Uh, but let's talk about what's going on in our neck of the woods here in the U.S. We got this strong shortwave trough working its way across the northern plains, which will spark a lot of thunderstorm development in the upper Midwest. Okay, we got kind of the tail of it down here. We got a moist air mass building back in. Unfortunately, it's going to be very hot in areas like the Mid-Atlantic today. And I think it's going to be another hot uh, week. Uh, for the eastern U.S. and central U.S. also. And then we could get a cool down next week with that trough that we were just talking about with the tropics. If we look at what's falling right now, dealing with some rain in the Dakotas, getting a little glitching right here. A uh, little area of rain that basically stretches across the plains all the way down to north Texas. A little area of rain in the deep south and uh, the Miss central Mississippi Valley. But nothing too crazy, nothing severe. But we do have some boomers rumbling through. Uh, northwest Minnesota might be getting woken up by some uh, thunder. Um, but you look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook for today. You do got that slight risk. Duluth, Minneapolis, some big storms are possible today, especially up here in northeast Minnesota near Duluth. I think you guys could get um, definitely some uh, severe storms, so most likely today. And then you got a marginal risk that basically extends all the way down to north and northwestern portions of Texas. There is a 2% risk of a tornado today within 25 miles in any given location in the green area. Um, so we're back to seeing your daily chance of severe storms. Wind threat, 15% risk of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then you got that 15% risk of hail in one inch in diameter or larger within 25 miles in any given location. So here we are again talking about severe weather, definitely no outbreak by any means, but you guys up here in the upper Midwest certainly going to deal with some nasty storms today. Watches and advisories and warnings, things like that. 
Heat advisories of returning. It's going to be hot up here ahead of this short wave trough that moves through. Uh, definitely got heat advisories up here in areas of western Wisconsin, areas of Minnesota, and then all of north Texas. Heat advisories is starting to get hot again. Unfortunately, southern uh, Oklahoma, a few counties in Arkansas, and then several, several areas in Louisiana. I always want to call these counties still in Louisiana. If I do, I apologize. I just think that yeah, it's just odd why they're not counties. I understand why they're not, um, but uh, yeah, not counties, but you do got heat advisories in your areas. Um, I, I can't even remember what you call them anymore, um, <laughs> um, like parishes or something. But anyways, heat advisories up here in the northeast, um, so could get pretty, uh, pretty hot today in the northeast. In fact, I'm very surprised there's no heat advisories in the mid-Atlantic, um, so um I think it could get over 100 degrees in areas of the Midland today. I definitely do think it can. But um, we'll break down region to region here. The southeast, uh, not too active today at all. Uh, we move here in time. We could get some storms that bubble up off the Gulf and move into uh, southern areas of Louisiana. Could get some storms today in areas of Tennessee and Kentucky, northern Mississippi. Uh, nothing too crazy as far as severe weather. You could get a strong or severe storm or two, but um, nothing too crazy at all. In fact, we zoom into this region. The Carolinas, Virginia, it's... it's uh, no rain. It just seems like when we get rain in these areas, it's from a tropical system. We just get a lot of it at one time, but um, no pop-up showers or storms to the Carolinas a day unless you just kind of get one rogue one that pops up. But Tennessee, Kentucky, you move through this in time and some storms could fire up in southern areas of Illinois around Evansville, Indiana, southern Indiana. Some storms in western areas in Kentucky later this afternoon, 4, 5, 6 p.m. Could get some storms around the Nashville area later this evening. Maybe a storm or two in Cincinnati, uh, Louisville, quite possible. Lexington, Kentucky later this evening, but nothing too crazy. These will swing through, develop this afternoon, kind of, uh, kind of dwindle away later this evening. Nothing, nothing too serious at all. The Northeast, pretty quiet day. It's definitely above average temperature wise. Uh, I don't know if uh, summer's trying to do a late flex on you guys, even though. Uh, you guys didn't have much of a summer during the actual summer, and technically it still is summer, but always for me, even here in the south, once you get to September, in my mind, it, it's no longer summer anymore. Um, but you're getting late tonight, still nothing going on, and then you start to see some rain enter the picture into um, western Ohio as you're waking up tomorrow morning. But today into tonight, nothing really going on. Man, look at these predicted high temperatures from the National Weather Service. Um, 100, 101 degrees in northern Virginia, uh, just a hot spot it has been over the last few days. Uh, very warm, uh, low to mid 90s into uh, southern and southeast areas of Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Very hot into southern New England and even Maine. I mean, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, southern tier of New York. Uh, very, very hot conditions. West Virginia, very hot today, especially out the higher elevations. Uh, definitely well above average up here in the northeast. So. Um, definitely get in uh, those last few days of the pool if you can. Um, the South Central U.S., um, there could be some storms today. There will be a little bit of a cap in place, so we could have some more widespread storms than what the uh, H4R model is showing for the Oklahoma and North Texas area. We'll see if they actually get going. But And here they are. They kind of fire up later this afternoon, later this evening and uh, could drift through Oklahoma City, maybe Tulsa. Uh, we'll see if this actually happens, but regardless, uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at all for really anybody, but there is a marginal risk of some severe storms. Could get some storms right here near the Texas-Louisiana border. And we zoom in to Missouri, Illinois, where I think kind of the epicenter of this area will be the most storms. That, and you see they fire up here in central areas of Missouri, um, kind of drift into eastern Missouri. Might make it to St. Louis by the time we get into later this afternoon, um, but some model guidance shows that this that they will dwindle away. But that might not might that might not be the case. You guys in St. Louis could get a storm uh, later this afternoon. We'll see if that happens. And the more storms fire up later uh, this evening. You know, around Columbia, Missouri, Joplin, um, you guys could see a storm. Uh, Springfield, Missouri, uh, Central Missouri. So you know, later this evening into the overnight hours. More storms will develop here in central Missouri, drifting into southeast Missouri, maybe even the boot hill, and then across Illinois, too, where you guys could see a stormy 
a late night for you folks. Maybe some rumbles of thunder um, into the wee hours of the morning. Could be waking up to a stormy morning tomorrow morning in Indianapolis down here to Evansville, Western Kentucky for sure. Uh, North Central U.S., strong uh, shortwave trough makes its way through, and the morning rain kind of ends, and then more storms fire up later this afternoon. We'll stop it right here, and we'll go on and flip a little bit closer, and here it is. Big storms. If you live in northeast and northeast country of Minnesota, prepare for some nasty storms later today. Damaging winds. All, all threats are possible. All threats are low, but there is a legit threat. Gusty winds, strong winds, damaging winds. Um, uh, the isolated tornado or two is possible, and it could get pretty dicey up here, so please be careful. A lot of rain could fall, too. There's no slight risk of excessive rainfall, but a lot of rain could fall, and these storms could be severe. There's not as widespread down here in eastern Minnesota and then western Wisconsin, so these storms could pack a punch right in here, too. Just not as widespread as up here near Duluth and points north into northeast Minnesota, uh, but these continue. It's going to be very stormy uh, later tonight here in western areas of Wisconsin, and then a very stormy late night in uh, western areas of the UP of Michigan. And uh, these continue to trail across the UP. So I know I got a couple of viewers from the UP. Expect a pretty stormy um, late night up here. Definitely gonna kind of go to sleep with no, no dampness out there, no rain, and you'll wake up to I think a, a lot of um, wetness on the grass and dampness out there and then we could we could be waking up tomorrow morning to some storms in the up moving across lake michigan into michigan so uh, definitely be careful the updraft of listy swap does indicate some storms will be rotating today so be careful uh for you know some tornado warnings please heed the warnings well up here and even into the up later tonight um i definitely think we can get some tornado warnings out up here so that's why there is that two percent risk of a tornado Western U.S., pretty quiet. Pretty quiet day and area storms could get going in northern and northeast Nevada. Could make their way into an extreme northwest Utah, southern sections of Idaho. Could get some isolated downpours in central central Nevada, I'm sorry, Montana. Outside of that, pretty, uh, pretty quiet day out west. Temperatures, very hot in the eastern U.S. Someone's going to hit 100 in the mid-Atlantic today. Definitely going to be some low 100s in the south central U.S., Hot all the way up into Canada, the Great Lakes region, very warm today, up into the 80s and 90s, the northeast, 80s and some 90s, uh, even in the Ohio Valley, the deep south, it's going to be more like a summer day. But out west, uh, the, nor the northern plains, much cooler behind this storm system, 60s and 70s for highs and below average just in general for the Rockies, but definitely warming back up compared to yesterday, but it's pretty nice still. That's all I got. God bless all y'all. Have a great Tuesday, and I'll talk to you soon.